on air, online, on demand. Watch AFR when you want, where you want with CN8, the Comcast Network. Say that uh, once you get one of these in your life, things instantly change. This is my Blackberry. It's something that I uh, generally don't leave home without, unfortunately. And many of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you know that it's convenient because it gives you the office in the palm of your hand. But at the same time, it turns your 9 to 5 into a 24-7. Some employees are now saying that they want to be paid for that time. Question is, are you one of them? For many of us, the BlackBerry is a constant companion, always on the hip, in a purse, or in the hand, in constant use. I actually can't imagine life without it. I use it from the second I wake up to the second I go to bed. But for many, the BlackBerry has become more of a nuisance rather than a phone or a source of information. Oh, this thing is like, uh, it's like a ball and chain. Wired up workers say they can't escape from the job after hours because of the BlackBerry. That being the case, they feel compensation should be in order. I definitely think that we should be compensated. I think people should be compensated for what they're being asked to do outside of work. Writers at ABC News demanded payment for their after work hours on the BlackBerry, and they got it after reaching a settlement with management. But elsewhere, people with their Blackberries keep multitasking long after their offices are closed. For some people, they feel like they're missing out on something. I think for others, there really is a genuine fear that they'll appear not to be a team player. The ring has come in. The texting is clear. Attorneys are sending a message to businesses. Prepare now for legal action. Employers don't really perceive that there is a problem or an issue with employees using their blackberries outside of work. They don't see it. Either way, this is going to be a hard case to crack, and more importantly, a hard habit to break. It is very tough to get rid of those. Yeah. Holy crap. Be careful. Oh, it's really good. I didn't know they were that tough. I've dropped a few of them, and they break up right away. Joining me to talk more about the crackberry addiction and whether or not you ought to be paid for it is two of my colleagues here and admit it, Blackberry addicts. The first is Pete Pedrick. Pete is our director of HR uh, here at CN8 and a man always on the move. And the other is a person you know well, our DC bureau chief, Robert Trainum, who finds it extremely hard to separate himself from his Blackberry. Okay, gentlemen, here are the ground rules. Uh, thanks for being here and here are the ground rules. This is my Blackberry. I've got it in hand. Pete, take your blind. I know you have it. I know it. I know it's there. Just go ahead and get it. Put it on the table. We're just going to let them sit there and, and they'll ring and buzz as they might in real time because they're always going off and you will attest to that. Yes. Robert, you will attest to that. These things are always going off. So as they go off, they'll just go off during the course. Can you hear that already? You're going to probably be hearing that a lot. Pete, let me start with you. And, and by the way, in the interest of disclosure, Pete was concerned that, you know, as an HR guy, you look, you know, i got to represent the company here. That's but right. you love this thing, and do you find it hard to separate yourself from it? Uh, yeah, you can't anymore. I mean, uh, our, our network is 24-7, and uh, people, need, people need, qu need questions answered 24-7. So I get, you know, phone calls on the weekends. I get phone calls at night. And... Uh, Someone's yeah, looking for yeah, me. There it is. Yeah. It's going off right now. Someone's looking for me and, and needs an answer to something, and uh, that's that's my job. Yeah, uh, Robert, uh, you're a guy on the move as well, and uh, in Washington, people are constantly moving, and you're trying to track them down to get them for stories and sources of information, and that doesn't always happen uh, at the end of the day at five o'clock, does it? You're absolutely correct, Art. I got to tell you, you know, on the campaign trail, literally every single campaign staffer, uh, from an intern all the way up to the candidate him, him or herself, uh, has the BlackBerry. Instant communication in politics is uh, the the is the, is the blood is the lifeblood of what we do around here. I mean, my BlackBerry is going off as we speak right now. <clears throat> it is something that everyone just simply has to have in order to stay connected. Okay, and 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 Pete, back to you for a minute. 
um, clarify, if you will, and I'm going to get you to put on your official hat, not mm -hmm. your BlackBerry user hat for a minute here, because let's say, for example, in Robert's case, in my case, when, when people are trying to reach you, look, there, here we go again. <laughs> when people are trying to reach you to, let's say I put in a call to someone at three in the afternoon because I'm trying to get a story uh, on air or something of that nature, but they didn't call me back to nine o'clock at night. And then when they called back, that ended up being a 30-minute conversation sure. briefing them for, say, a story we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I could say, hey, I was working at 9 o'clock at night last night. But you say mm -hmm. that it's not quite that simple. No, I think it depends on, you know, what kind of job you have with the company. Um, you and myself, Robert, uh, you know, we have a job that our, we're not paid to do our job by how long it takes. We have a job to accomplish, and no matter how long it takes, that's... That's what we're here for. Yeah, and isn't it, isn't it also the nature of those kinds of calls? Having a cocktail and my BlackBerry goes off, and, mm -hmm. but if it's just someone sending uh, information to read or briefing or something, I can read that at my leisure. That's not really work, but it's different if someone is calling you to say, hey, uh, I need that information. Can you get me that um, by the end of the day? And it's Saturday. Sure, uh, but again, you know, uh, again, if you're putting together a segment, you want to be confident that on Monday morning you're going to be ready to roll with that story. And uh, if that's when you can get that information, that's when you're going to have to take time out of your day to get that done. Yeah. Robert, you say what to that about those types of scenarios? I'd say do it. I mean, look, I mean, we live in, a, uh, in an information age right now. We also live in an instant message age, uh, Art. When someone leaves you a voicemail, when someone sends you an email, they expect for it to be returned in a very timely fashion. The question becomes, is what is a timely fashion? For me, you know, that's something probably within the next maybe 10 or 15 minutes. For some people, that's sometimes 5 or 10 seconds, literally. Uh, it just really depends on the very age uh, of what we're living in right now and what kind of work that you do. I mean, I have a BlackBerry and an iPhone because, I, I first of all, I'm, I'm I'm addicted, and that's number one. But also number two is because I just have to have that information at my fingertips literally at every single moment because of the very nature of, of the work that we're in. And I'm always afraid, I'm always afraid uh, that I'm going to turn on the television set on a competitor network uh, and someone's going to have something that I should have known uh, in the first place. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you this, I was watching Robert in the preview monitor just before we came on air and Robert was checking his emails. And, and that's the other thing about it. You know, you're getting phone calls, you're getting emails, you're getting text messages. Sure. So there's a, such a variety of sources here. That, do, do any of you see this changing the landscape of suits like the one from ABC and others? Some have even said that it's going to eliminate the office assistant or the secretary, as we used to refer to them as, because everything that you might need in terms of communication may be right here. I, I don't. I mean, again, as Robert said, I think that, you know, where our country is now, where our, you know the workforce is, is, is it's an instantaneous world, and uh, you know people people have work to get done. Um, and I think what it comes down to is, you know, you need to learn to manage your BlackBerry. Manage um, the BlackBerry. You know, you, <laughs> there's got to be times you put it down. You know, I've had my kids tell me, uh, put down the phone, Dad, and put you know, this that's, thing away. That's when you got to put it down for a little while. Yeah, Robert. You know, Art, it's really interesting. A couple of days ago, as you may know, I'm a professor at, at George Washington University, and I gave my final exam on Monday night. And a lot of the students actually said, you know what, we don't write. We actually email, and we actually write our, our, our papers on the computer. So for us to actually sit down and write our final exam on a piece of paper, that's foreign to us. And it's really interesting because I asked them, I said, do you mean to tell me that you actually don't write down on a piece of paper? And it dawned on me. They said, no, we don't. We don't do that. We actually write everything, everything down, either on text messaging um, or on the computer. So penmanship in yeah. terms of actually writing something down on a piece of paper is almost obsolete. Yeah. One more time, you hear it going off uh, as we speak. I've got to wrap this up. But, Robert, you heard Pete's our HR guy. He said we're, we, we're okay to put this thing away from time to time. And, Pete, that will give you the same information to all of our viewers. Put it away. Just put the BlackBerry down and step away from it from time to time. That's Pete Pedrick and Robert Trainer, my two of my colleagues here. Gentlemen, thank you both for um, engaging me in this very informative discussion.